Welcome to the webinar. I'm your host, CJ Halleck, and we're going to start building our website in a bit. But before we do, I want to check one last time to make sure you're 100% ready. The Before We Start page will walk you through everything you need. If you've not had a chance to go through that yet, please go back and do that now. And one last thing before I forget, don't forget to tweet hashtag web design webinar for a chance to win a free 15 minute one on one consultation and strategy session for your business after you launch your website. Now, if you're ready, let's get to it. All right, so we are on the my account page inside of HostJack. First thing we're going to need to do is log into our account. Now you can do this two ways. You can do this by going to the login page itself, which is your domain, let's say .com forward slash WP dash admin. If you just add that last little bit right here underneath the mouse, if you look the forward slash WP dash admin, if you can add that directly after your domain, it will take you to the WordPress uh, login page. You can also from this page, if you click on manage all under manage WordPress, you'll get to this page and then you can just simply click edit site and it will automatically take you into your WordPress admin and get you logged in. Now, the first time you're logging in, you're going to have this quick start wizard, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and click no thanks and we're going to do all this manually. We will click OK for the pop up. Congratulations, you are officially inside of your WordPress dashboard. Now this is where you're going to want to be 90% of the time. From your dashboard, you can update your blog, you can update pages, add new content, upload images, and everything you need to do for your website. So from here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to the dismiss box, or, or, or X if you will, and we're going to go ahead and dismiss the welcome message. We'll minimize a couple of these and just free up some space just so it looks a little bit more on the clean side. And we're going to go ahead and get started by deleting all of our defaults. So the first thing we're going to do is go in posts, go under all posts. We're going to go ahead and trash hello world. Once it's in the trash, we'll click on trash and delete permanently. Then we're going to come down to the next thing, which is pages and go all pages. You'll have two pages here. We are going to trash this sample page. Do not, I repeat, please do not do anything to the privacy policy page yet. We're going to go ahead and trash the sample page and then we'll go into trash and delete permanently the sample page. Once again, we are not deleting the privacy policy. So we'll delete the uh, sample page, go back to all, and then you'll see the privacy policy page is still there. Once we've done that, we're going to go down to appearance and themes. And then we're going to remove the 2017 and the 2016 default themes. So you're going to click on the theme at details, click delete and confirm that you want to delete the theme. We'll click on that, delete and OK. And then when you get down to where the only theme you have is 2019, we're good with themes until we come back here in a second and install our theme. So we're going to go into plugins next. And this is where we're going to come in and basically take these two forms that are not currently active. We're going to check both of those and we're going to delete those and click apply and OK. Now that those two have deleted, we have the default content, if you will, all deleted and ready for us to get started putting our information in. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come down to users and go to your profile. This is totally personal preference. I like to come in here and fill this out as much as possible while starting a new site. So when you're in the WordPress website, you want to make sure, especially in your, with, when you're in the early building phases, I'll be able to talk eventually, I promise. Um, you'll want to make sure that you have this checkbox checked because this will give you this toolbar that you see across the top of the page while you view your website. That being said, the next thing we're going to go, we'll do first name, last name, Nickname required, I'll just CJ Halleck, displayed publicly as CJ. Uh, email is required. You cannot change this, 
without confirming from the other web uh, email address uh, your website you want to make sure that you put your entire website including the HTTPS and I'm gonna go ahead and put in web design webinar.com and because I'm seeing some drop downs pop up with some a couple of client names and stuff that this will be blurred out and covered for privacy the next thing is your bio if you want to go ahead and fill out your bio I don't have that set right now your profile picture this is more for comments than anything so your picture can show up in your comments and things like that that is set up on Gravatar that's stuff we can cover in the extended education modules. The last thing I'm going to cover is the password. If you ever need to come in here and change your password, you can do so by clicking generate password. You have this crazy jargon nonsense here. You can go ahead and delete that. Type in your new password. You can click hide if you don't want to see the characters and you're typing on something like a screen recording like I'm doing right now. But I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. I like my password. Um, and I'm not going to actually go into saving this. Um, I'm sorry, you're updating this profile because I don't have all my content ready for this. Like I said, that's totally fine if you don't have your content. Just want to make sure that you understand this is where you would customize anything for your profile. You want to make sure that you have some information here, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of blogging, things of that nature. That being said, next thing is to go in and get started installing and customizing our website with themes uh, I'm sorry with the theme and plugins so we're gonna start with the themes we're gonna come in and we're gonna click on add new and we're gonna search for the hello theme so we're just gonna type in hello and here we go hello Elementor so we're gonna go ahead and click on install and then it's gonna install and then we're gonna activate once you have this activated it's gonna be a little bit of a change um, if you did take a look at the website before we got started with the webinar with just the basic WordPress install may look a little bit different but we're gonna change all of that over time the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to install all of our plugins but we're gonna do it with a shortcut so we're gonna go to add new plugin under plugins click on add new and we're gonna search for WP faves WP F A V S and it's WP Faves Plugin Manager. We're going to install that now. And once it's installed, we're going to go ahead and activate it. Now, the thing with this is this is how we're going to bulk install all of the plugins that we need, with the exception of the Elementor Pro plugin, which we will get to here in a second. But this will allow us to do everything at once and not have to go through and search for each plugin one at a time. So in order to do that, we're going to come back to the before we start page and we're going to come inside of the box for the bulk installer quick key and we're going to highlight that and we're going to right click on it and we're going to copy that. So we're going to copy this text right here and it looks crazy, but it doesn't need to make sense to us. So we're going to come in here under the quick key for WP faves and we're going to right click and paste that in and simply click quick load this is going to go pull that list out that i've put together for you guys as the core plugins and it will run this list to start getting everything installed and and then we can go through and activate so we're going to go ahead and click on run this list we'll check the box at the top to auto select all of the plugins and then under bulk actions we'll go ahead and click on install and click apply now most of the time if you're familiar with the settings, you can go in and activate everything at once. To make it easier for, honestly, me to make sure I don't skip any steps because I am human and I do that a lot, I'm going to go through and activate these one at a time. And what I mean by that is as we install this all at once, you can activate everything at once, but the problem in doing that is sometimes it helps, if you will, enable you to forget things so I like going through one at a time and activating everything so you see here everything has been installed if you click on return to WP faves installer you can see all of them are installed and ready to be activated I'm gonna go into plugins click on installed plugins and you'll see the same thing here so um, the next thing and, and you can see it's it says right here I guess um, 
there's a brand new update for the fast velocity minify not a problem i will show you how to update all that at when the time comes so now that we have them all installed we're going to go through and activate one at a time with each of the steps that we need to do inside of the settings for each plugin so we're going to start with auto optimize i'm going to go ahead and click activate and now that it's activated i'm going to come down to the settings on the left we're going to go down to auto optimize and click on auto optimize all right now that we're here we're going to go ahead and check this first box to optimize javascript code we'll uncheck the second box we'll do the same thing for css options we'll check the first uncheck the second we'll check to optimize html code and then we'll come down and click on save changes and empty cache now that you've done that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Extra. We're going to click on the very last option for Google Fonts. And then we'll check these next two boxes to remove the WordPress core emojis and the query strings. And then we'll come down and click on Save Changes. Now that we have Auto Optimize complete, the next thing is to go into Plugins and move on with our next plugin, Black Hole for Bad Bots. Click Activate. And the only thing we're doing here is going to black hole or go to settings. And then we're going to basically just come right here and undo this check to make sure that we have the email alerts turned off. We'll go down to the bottom and click on save changes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come into plugins and we're going to activate Elementor. There are no settings for Elementor itself, although there will be a complete walkthrough for Elementor and Elementor Pro inside of the extended education modules. And that leads us to Elementor Pro. So because it is a paid plugin, I could not set it up to install with the quick key. So we're going to have to upload the plugin manually and that's not a problem. All you need to do is come over to plugins and click on add new. Once you're here, you'll just simply need to click on Upload Plugin. And then once you are here, you can click on Choose File and find the file that way. Or I actually have it open in a second window, so I'm going to actually grab the plugin. And I'm going to drag it in and put it right on Choose File. And we'll install now. Now that you have that installed, we're going to go ahead and click Activate. And while that did activate with WordPress, you still need to connect it and activate it with the Elementor platform itself. Go ahead and click on Connect and Activate. We're going to go ahead and log in here. And then once you're logged in, it will actually take you to a page that actually verifies your license for the Page Builder Elementor and then it'll actually ask you if you want to go ahead and connect. We're going to go ahead and connect. And then now just like that, Elementor Pro is good to go. That being said, if you do not have Elementor Pro, you can get a license at www.buyprolink.com. It is my affiliate link, and if you do buy through the link, I will receive a compensation, and that is at no extra cost to you. Price doesn't go up or down whether you use my affiliate link or you go straight to the Elementor website. So now that we have everything activated for the Elementor Pro, the next thing we're going to do inside of the plugins, go back to install plugins, and we're going to do fast velocity minify. Since there is a new version of this, I'm going to go ahead and click on update now and let that go ahead and update before I activate it. I'm going to go ahead and click on activate. And now that that is activated, we can move on to the next one because there are no steps to set this up, which is heartbeat control. We're going to go ahead and activate that one. There's a couple settings in this one, but it's not too bad. So we're going to go ahead and go to settings and heartbeat control settings. And then we're going to take the allow heartbeat to modify heartbeat. We'll select all three and then we'll just drag the frequency from 15 all the way over to 300 and then come down and click on save changes now I'm gonna go ahead and X out these pop-ups because I don't need those 
Um, and then the next thing we're going to do, according to our lovely, lovely outline here, is we're going to go to Pretty Links and we're going to activate Pretty Links. And I'm going to show you how awesome this plugin is. I've seriously been using this plugin for years. I love this plugin. It's one of my favorite plugins. So we're going to go ahead and activate. And what this does is this actually allows you to have your own custom URL shortener. Kind of like the Bitly's and the different you know website URL shorteners like that. But it's yours. It's your name. Um, so instead of having like a massive, and we'll go down the sideline. If you just go ahead and go to Pretty Links, you'll see here. We'll go Add New. So for instance, if your website, uh, let's say your Facebook page or Instagram account, we'll say Facebook. So it's your Facebook page is going to be HTTPS and then it's going to be facebook.com forward slash web design webinar. Now this is a decent link. Like this is not too bad compared to some of the longer links that are on the internet. If you're looking at a LinkedIn page, then it's gonna, you know, be a bit longer. YouTube channel can be massive with all the crazy characters at the end. But you just put where you want the customer or your visitors to land, and then from here you just come down to this section right here, and then you can just put webinar. And then now, anytime you send people to yourbrandsname.com forward slash webinar, it'll automatically redirect. So we're gonna go ahead, and you can put notes in. You can add a title. Um, I'm going to just put webinar. All this is is for you to know what that link is for. So when you go in your back end, it'll just tell you so you're not having a second guess and open up the link and see what it is. So we can update that. It does give you clicks so you can see how many visits and how many um, like unique visits and whatnot are on your thing. I'm going to go ahead and click this to copy this so I can show you what we did. We'll paste this in here. Then you see yourbrandsname.com forward slash webinar. I hit enter and it automatically will redirect me over to the Make Me Watch My Own Website Web Design Webinar Facebook page. Now, that is pretty links. I just wanted to show you guys how awesome that is. No actual settings to set up there. Just wanted to give you guys a good example. The next thing we're going to do under plugins is the really simple SSL so we're gonna come down and click activate on that while that's active you gotta do one more go ahead and activate and now your SSL should be forced to load HTTPS anytime it loads anything from your website so you should be good and secure moving down the list the last thing we have is the Yoast SEO so we're gonna go ahead and click activate and once we have that activate or, or activated we're not going to do anything in the settings but I am just to be safe so I don't forget I'm gonna open this up and, and open the general up I'm gonna do this in a separate tab because I'm gonna come back here in a second when we get to creating the menu for the footer and grab a link for the sitemap so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this open I'm gonna go to features and I'm gonna just basically under XML sitemaps we'll hit this question mark I'm going to click see the XML sitemap and then in the address bar and I'll move this down so you guys can actually see it in the address bar is your sitemap URL so you want to basically just grab this URL I'm going to go ahead and copy that now um, so we just right click and I will copy um, and I'm going to use this in a step here in a few you know here in a little bit so I'm going to keep this open in case if I need to go back for some reason if I copy something I'm not expecting to. That's all the plugins, everything set there. The last thing we need to do is to get the structure started. So we're going to go to tools and we're going to click on import. And I've created a file for you guys that will allow you to actually basically have all the default pages you need created really quick really simple so we're going to go ahead and click on install now under wordpress under the tools and import click on run importer and once again it's going to ask you to choose the file you can click on it or search on it i have it open in another window so we're going to drag this in and then upload file and import what we're going to do here is we're going to actually assign posts to an existing user. We'll select our main user that we created. We're not going to check download and import file attach attachments. We don't need any of that. We just need a couple of the pages that it's created. 
we're going to click submit and it's going to go in and actually create those pages for us so now that we've done that we can come into pages and we can take a look and see that it has all of the pages that we need so I'm gonna go ahead uh, I'm gonna quick edit this and I'm gonna just change the sub uh, status to published I will come back and I will walk through some stuff on the privacy policy page here in a second if you want to add a new page all you need to do from this page is simply click on add new keep in mind that we're only doing structure at this point we're gonna come back into each page individually at a later time here in a bit and actually make it look good and upload the content and everything else and we're just gonna go ahead and title the page if you're creating any new ones so we'll just put services and I'm gonna go ahead and click on publish and publish now that I have that done next thing we're gonna do is our general settings for the site itself so we're gonna come down to settings and we're gonna come on up to general and then we're gonna just simply come through and make sure everything is correct so the first thing is our site title this is gonna be your brand's name next thing is your tagline I don't have a tagline for this site I'm gonna just leave it as just another actually no we're, we're not gonna do that we'll put be great and stay boosted alright so we got the tagline and the title both in there the next thing we're gonna need to do is make sure your email address is correct down the list is the time zone I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and see if I can find New York there we go next thing is your date and time format I'm totally cool with the way it sits right now week starts on Monday that works for me I'm gonna go ahead and click save changes now that I've done that we'll get rid of these pop-ups and then I'm gonna actually get started with the next step which is actually uh, creating our menus so we'll come under appearance and we'll go to menus this is gonna be your first menu I'm gonna change this menu one to header menu just to make it easier for me to remember what is what I'm gonna go ahead and remove where it says home page edit this this is your home page but this link at the very top is always your home link regardless of what page you use so you wanna make sure that you keep this custom link there and then basically from here you can get rid of the pages that you don't want in your header menu the way I like to think of the header menu is just for your regular visitors people who want to read about you find out about your products your services what you have to offer things of that nature so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the terms of use agreement um, for the example of this website I'm gonna go ahead and remove services I'm not gonna use the services page like I said we'll remove this remove the disclaimer and for right now I'm not gonna have a blog so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the blog so we're gonna have home about and contact so that is all I want inside of this menu one quick side note they are easy to drag around if you wanna move the contact up and they'll display left to right so it'll be home about contact and you'll see what I mean in a second but if you wanted to move them you can move them that way and if you want to have a drop down where if you hover over home about drops down that's how you do it just drag it in end in, in a little bit and you're good to go from here I'm gonna go ahead and click create menu we have our header menu saved the next thing I'm gonna do is create a new menu and do our footer menu the footer menu is for legal pages your SEO pages things of that nature now while I am going to be discussing some legal pages I need to make a disclaimer I am not an attorney and before you use any of the content or templates provided by myself on or in any of my properties and content you should consult a professional neither my content nor myself should be taken as legal advice please seek professional help with your disclaimers and any other legal pages now I hate reading I had to do it next thing we're gonna do is create our footer menu click create menu and then we're gonna put in any of the menu like items that we need in the footer the first thing we need to do before we forget is go into custom links and we're gonna paste in our sitemap that we copied earlier if you remember when we came over here and click the CXML sitemap that that thing 
copy that, paste that in. We're going to put the link text as sitemap. Um, anyways, all right, so we got that add to menu. We have the sitemap in. Then from here, the only thing that I highly recommend above anything that you make sure that you have is your privacy policies. So now we have privacy policy. Um, I'm going to put the contact page. I always like having contact. Um, terms of use agreement, if you're going to have that. And then, of course, a disclaimer. If you have a disclaimer, once again, I should not be taken for, you know, nothing I say should be taken as legal advice. But um, disclaimers are important. If you think you may need a disclaimer, contact an attorney and have them help you putting a disclaimer together doesn't matter what your website is doing you probably need a disclaimer so please go seek legal advice I'm gonna go ahead and click add to menu to add these here and go ahead and put sitemap at the end I'm good with the way that sits I'm gonna go ahead and click on save menu and now we're off to the next one and that is by that is the reading settings. So we're gonna go basically the same set we were with the general. We're gonna come under reading. And this is where we're gonna take it from a blog into a website with a custom home page. So as long as you have your latest post selected here, it's gonna run and display just your blog post. If you wanna have it as a website, that's what we're doing. We're going to click a static page and then your home page will set to home page. And then if you decide you're going to blog, you would turn the post page down to blog if you're going to actually use the blog post. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there because we are going to be covering that in the extended education modules at a later time. The last thing we need to check and make sure of is that this box is unchecked. You want to make sure that that box is unchecked. If this is checked, it basically tells Google not to look at your website and that could hurt you in the long run. So please make sure that isn't checked and click save changes. All right, now that we've done that, the next thing to do is your permalinks. You want to go to permalinks, click on post name and click save changes. Now for the disclaimer again, I should not be listened to. You should not take anything I say as legal advice. Basically, if you click on edit, this will take you to your privacy policy page, privacy policy page content. This is all put together by WordPress. It gives you a good idea of what you need to have. Just make sure you have your privacy policy filled out and complete. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and just click update. I'm not going to go through all this with you guys. That being said, now that we've done that, I need to take a few seconds to discuss image optimization. Now, this isn't a part of the webinar, but it is something that you need to understand. You know, when it comes to websites, you know, it only makes sense that the smaller the files on your website, the faster your site will load. Now, part of image optimization is image resizing which is basically making sure that the image is the actual size you're going to display on your website. For example, if we go to before we start, so if you look at the entire width of your website as 1200, then you basically can think if you break this down the middle, then this is 600, that's 600. And if you break that down the middle, it's 300, 300. And then that's the sizes of the images, if you will, that I actually focus on uploading. Aside from resizing, optimizing your images for mobile and web use is just as important. Now you can do this with Photoshop using the Save for Web option. But if you don't have Photoshop, you can use a free website called tinypng.com. It's amazing. Video walkthroughs for both can be found in the extended education modules. And that being said, please be sure to optimize all of your images. Make sure it's resized properly before you upload to your website so we can be sure that the website loads in a decent time. Now, we've covered that. Let's start uploading and updating our content. So we're gonna go back to our dashboard. Go ahead and click on dashboard, 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 dashboard. All right, uh, get rid of some of these other extra windows that we don't need open. Now that we are on the dashboard, we're gonna get started inside of the customize section so we're going to basically go under appearance and we're going to click on customize 
So we're going to go ahead into site identity. This is where you're going to upload your logo, site icon. Your title and tagline can also be edited here as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on select logo. Going to go ahead and drag the logo I designed for this in. Anytime you put in, you're going to want to fill out a few things. You always want to make sure that you put in an alt text. So you want to make sure this is just your brand's name example logo file. Uh, and then you want to have a description filled out. You don't have to do the caption. I do recommend that you do at least have the alt text. Make sure the title makes sense and it's not like image zero one and make sure the description is filled out so the description i'm going to basically just put uh logo file for your brand's name all right and select and i'm going to go ahead and skip cropping i have this size the way i want it now that we have that in you see the logos in the header starting to come together a little bit next thing we're going to click select site icon and I'm going to go ahead and upload files and we're going to go ahead and bring the icon in. Same thing here. Just put YB in icon. YB in icon and select. I'm going to, I'm, I'm kind of rushing through this, but I just, you guys can go in and fill out the stuff. I don't think you guys want to watch me type everything. We'll go ahead and click publish, get the icon, get the logo saved into the site gonna go ahead and X out alright so real quick before I get into the actual design section I want to go over a printable that I put together for you guys I have a uh, copy of one here that I filled out for the webinar so you can see it here let me go ahead and back this up so you can take a look at it um, you have it broken down into basically four sections the top part is gonna be for your header which is where your logo and menu is gonna go possibly your social media icons if you want to share those your footer at the bottom and then you have a sketch where you can actually draw out how you want your homepage to look as well as any notes that you need to take um, if you want to reference into um, a Word document or something that you have your content in, which is what I have on a separate screen. So as we go through the design phase, I'm going to be dragging and copying and pasting the content from that Word document. So that being said, let's go ahead and hop over to the computer and get started designing our header. Alright, so we are in the dashboard. In order to go in and get started on our header, we're going to come over to Templates underneath the Elementor icon, and we're going to click on Theme Builder. Once we are here, we're going to go up and click on Header at the top, and then we're going to simply click on Add New Header. Inside of this, you can go ahead and name your template if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and skip that and click on Create Template because I'm only going to do one header. Once you are here, there are two different ways you can do this. If you want to design from scratch and you don't want to use a template, you can X out of this folder and go ahead and do a free design. To make this easier for all parties involved, I'm going to go ahead and use a basic template. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and use this. It's a very simple basic header. So we're going to go ahead and click on insert. And now that you've done that, you see the header is in. It doesn't necessarily look right, and that's because it was designed with a different size for your logo. The menu pulled in is the footer menu instead of the header menu. If you want to add other things, you can do that. But for right now, let's go ahead and get this looking right. So we're going to come up into the icon, if you will, or the uh, image element. We're going to click on the pencil, and we're going to go ahead and click on style. And we're going to bring this to percentage and take this to 100. And now you can see it's starting to come together a little bit. You don't have to worry about the you know, super tiny logo that was in there. We can come back to the content part of the image and align this left. So this takes over to the left. Then we can come over here and change the footer, menu, footer menu, if I can talk, to header menu and now it's starting to look like it should. Of course, I have this super basic and we're only going to be doing the home page and the contact page. Everything else can be done. Once you understand how to do the home page, the rest of them will come fairly easily. And the contact page, I'm gonna do that one specifically to show you how to create a good contact form. 
but for now we have the pages that we want in the menu as you see we have this little navigation pointer is what they call it uh, I don't like those so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the pointer and I'm gonna say none and now it's nice and clean if you want you can come into the style you can change the text color so if it hovers over it what color you want it to be you know we can come in here and set this to like a let's do a red so we'll do D all right so I got the color in so now when I hover over it it'll turn to that red and then if you want a different color when it's active you can do that here as well and I'll just put a light gray so whatever you're on that page it'll be light gray so now that we have those colors set header is complete as far as the main design the next thing you're gonna need to do is the actual responsive check to make sure it looks good and is designed right when people view your website on a tablet or on a smartphone so in order to do that we're gonna come down to the bottom left hand side in this little um, sidebar um, section and we're gonna click on this little looks like a computer icon it's the responsive mode so we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna go to tablet now once you're here you can see the difference in the menus um, and if you wanted to you know change things you can at this point I think that's fine for the header as far as tablets are concerned so I'm gonna go ahead and move into mobile and this is where normally you will see the major issues so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna actually come in to this section for the logo and you see the alignment has the different colors in I'm gonna actually make sure that stays left and then I'm gonna go to style and then it has this as well and I'm gonna go ahead and do percentage and take that up to hundred percent so now it looks the way it should so now that we have the responsive check we've made sure everything is the way we want it let me go ahead and back this back out to desktop so we're going to go ahead and wrap up with the header we're going to click publish and then you're just going to simply click add condition which basically adds this header to the entire website click save and close and your header is now live so if you actually go to the website itself you'll see the header at the top of your website and you can see it by just simply clicking on this preview we're going to go ahead and click preview you see the lighter color gray here and then you see the red change over when you hover over it so there your header is finished now if you go back into your dashboard come back into templates and the theme builder and we'll move forward with our footer so we're gonna go up to footer click on footer and then we're gonna click on add new footer once again I'm not gonna worry about the template name we'll go ahead and just click on create template and just the same as the header there are free templates that you can use that come with Elementor Pro or you can do everything from scratch to make it easy we are going to be using a template so we're gonna come down I'm gonna go ahead and use this template right here we'll click insert and now we have the template imported that being said we want to be sure that we get everything done and cleaned up the way we did the header so the first thing we're gonna do is come into the menu in our footer of course it has the right menu but now we need to make sure that it looks right we get the spacing and everything else correct so we can come in here move this over a little bit if we need to and since this section is gonna be my social media icons which I can go ahead and drag that up and we'll go ahead and delete the number <clears throat> and now that we have that it's straight across the bottom of the screen looks clean we have the copyright section we can go ahead and go in here and change that we can go ahead and change the design by I'm gonna go ahead and put my name in as far as the social media icons are concerned you can change the icons if you don't want specific icons like I don't want the Google Plus we can go ahead and X that out I don't want the Twitter I'm gonna go ahead and change that over to the Instagram so I'm gonna go ahead and click on icon library and I'm gonna just come up here and find the Instagram icon we'll click on that click on insert and now we have Facebook Instagram and Pinterest so I'm gonna go ahead and use those and we'll link out and I can go ahead and click add item and I'm gonna go ahead and change this to YouTube and click insert and now you just simply come in 
and we're going to paste in the URL for each of these different social media sites. So I'm going to start by coming over. We're going to grab the URL for Facebook. I'll copy that, paste that in here. Make sure we don't have any extra spaces. I'm going to leave it the official color. So we'll go ahead and close out Facebook. Click on Instagram. Grab that URL. And I have this over. Let me go ahead and bring this over so you guys can see it. I have this in a separate Word document like I mentioned earlier in the webinar. So we're just copying and pasting and bringing those over here. Paste in the Instagram link. The Pinterest URL for my board for this and then the YouTube link for my channel. All right, now that I have that, we have the menus here, we have the footer, and I might actually go ahead, um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down, and this is the thing I love with this, is you can completely change things. So at any point, it's very easy, just drag and move stuff around. I'm gonna go ahead and take this center, and I'm going to simplify this a little bit. So I have this down. It's a little bit different than what I had sketched out in my initial thought process. But visually, I just think this is going to look better. So we're going to go ahead and go with this. We'll come down and do our responsive check. We'll go to tablet. Come down and take a look at it. Still looks good. We'll go to mobile. Come down. And we see there's a bit of an issue. It doesn't necessarily lay out right. So we're going to go ahead um, come into this make this yeah I know got it edit this make sure it's centered and we'll go into style make sure everything looks right we'll go into the column width and we'll take this up to 100 on the mobile and then the hamburger stack we should be able to come in and center that oh, in the content here. All right, so now we have that where they can click that to open up the menu. Um, we have the separator bar, and then the only thing we'll need here is to change this to 100% on the width. And then that keeps the icons uh, centered below it. I like the way that looks. Footer's ready to roll. So all we need to do is the same thing with the header. We click on publish, click on add condition, make sure it includes the entire site, and then click save and close. Now if you go back to your website, we click refresh. And now you see your footer. Of course, it's not at the bottom of the page because there's no information on the actual homepage itself yet. But congratulations, you have now created your header and your footer. It's time to dig into the homepage design. So in order to do that, we're going to come back into our dashboard. Inside of the dashboard, we're simply going to come into pages. And then we're going to come down to homepage and click on edit with Elementor. And now it's time to get started designing our home page. The first thing we're going to do is come down to the gear in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. We're going to click on settings and then from here we're going to go ahead and hide the title and we're going to change the page layout to Elementor full width. If you want to create specific pages on your website that doesn't have the header and footer in it, where you can custom the entire page, then you would use the Elementor Canvas, which just makes an entire blank screen. So I'm going to go ahead and change that so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So everything you design is just that, whatever it is for that page. So we're going to go ahead and go back to full width because we want the header and footer in there. And now it's time to get started. Once again, you can use the template or you can do it yourself. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the templates and see if there's anything that I like that's gonna be similar to the draw out that I have. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually come up here and type in homepage, just so I can see all of the homepages that they have here. Let's go ahead and take a look. 
I know I want to keep it super simple. I don't want to complicate it too much because there's not going to be a lot of information on the page itself. And the biggest thing to remember is just because like, for instance, this website is not necessarily any of these things. It's just something that I'm doing to kind of drive a little bit of traffic back to the webinar. So it definitely doesn't fit into like plant shop or cake shop or anything like that. And that's totally fine. What we're looking at is not necessarily the content as much as the design and layout. So as I'm looking through here, I think the best option for me might actually be the home page for the study. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And as you see, it kind of has a cool little video landing page that would work. Pause that. That would work for um, one of the sections that I have to showcase the webinar sales video. And I'm looking at this like there's some things that I like, some things I won't use. But for right now, there's a few things on here that I like. So I'm going to go ahead and click insert. And the one thing, like it doesn't have the hero section that I like, and that's totally fine. We can change that later. This is going to be a section that I use towards the bottom of the website. So I'm going to go ahead and do one section from scratch. And in this one, we're going to change. I'm going to take this stretch section, yes, to make it full width. We'll go style. Um, I'll do classic and we'll choose image. The first thing I need is business brand name. Go ahead and drop that in and I'm going to do the alt text. So um, business brand name hero image for YBN. And we'll come down to the description and man plain chess. We'll do that. Insert media. And so now that and, and you really can't see it because there's no content in there. But I'm going to go ahead and, and make some changes. We'll center center. Um, attachment. Uh, I'll go ahead and do fixed and size cover. And this is going to make it cover the entire section. So when I come in and we'll make sure it says no repeat, I can come in here into the total section itself and the layout and change the column height to do uh, minimum height. And then that allows me to actually have this image kind of cover up more space without having any actual elements in here. So once I put the elements in, it'll start looking really clean. So I'm going to start with a heading. We're going to put this in. I'm going to make sure I get my Word document open and start the copy and paste process. I'm going to start with the heading. I'm going to go ahead and center. Um, I'll go ahead and do a style. We'll change the color to white. And we can do a text shadow, which will give it a little bit of a drop shadow. And we can also come in, which is probably going to look better anyways. We'll come under style, and I'm going to add a background overlay. Give it a little bit of a dark overlay to it, um, just so the text will actually like pop off of the screen. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, come back to the title. We'll go into the textography or typography and change the font size. We'll take it to 50. So we'll do this 50. And then I'm going to come in. We'll do the next section with text. Let that load. There we go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then I have a little small kind of tagline type thing. Put that in. And then I'm going to go ahead into style. We'll go center. Text color white. We'll go into the typography. We'll take this about right there. Come down, decoration. Yeah, that works. All right, so we got that. Come into the content. So we have that done. That's the first section that I have set up for the actual website. The next section is the showcase for the blog post. So I'm going to come in here and this is going to be another section we're going to create. Um, I'm going to break it into two sections. I might not keep it 50-50 depending on how this looks, but we'll give it a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And because I have this as the next one down, it's set at the default background setting. So I'm not going to actually worry about making this a uh, stretch full section. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is put in an image. We're going to drag this over, click on choose image, and then I'm basically going to bring in the next image that I'm going to use, which is the naming a business thumbnail. Go ahead and bring this in. And then it's just naming a business thumbnail. How to name a business or brand blog post thumbnail. We'll click insert media. And now that we have that, the one thing I'm going to do, because it doesn't look right to me, it looks a little too tight through here. I want some extra spacing. So I'm going to come into edit image. Um, I'm going to make sure image size is actually adjusted um, because we want to make sure in anything that we use, and I mentioned this earlier, in the, is the image optimization. I already have this size down, so it's not a massive image file, but the display size of it needs to be down we don't need it to be large we need to make sure because we're looking at this as half a page looking at it with you know 768 as far as the width is concerned that basically makes it half a page and then the medium setting would be you know down to the quarter page and you can see that just by doing that so we're going to go ahead and put it back to medium large and then we're going to start filling this section out which is going to be our call to action so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the elements. You can come into the search widget and just simply come in and you know go call. And then now you see the call to action. So you can just drag that in. I am not going to be using the image on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So all we have is the headline, the text, and the button. I'm going to come in here and we're going to vertical align. And put this in the middle. This will make sure that it stays kind of even with the image itself. And now that I have that, I'm going to actually come back in here because I wanted to see visually how that set. Um, so I know padding and everything else, how this is going to look. So I'm going to start off. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to come into this total section. We're going to edit here. And under advanced, I'm just going to set an extra margin on the top and the bottom just to give it some extra spacing. And we'll go 50 pixels. I kind of like the way that looks. You can hit this, by the way let you actually see it full screen so now we have that and of course we still got all this other stuff down here I still may use a few more but I know I'm definitely using this section I'll just have to change a few things anyways open that back into the editor and now we'll come into the call to action and start editing the actual content so we're not using the image go ahead and close that out go into the content we're gonna go into the title of it how to name your brand we'll copy that off of the text document paste that in then I have some written content for the body and then the last thing is the button so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that URL we'll copy and then I'll come in and just paste that in here now when you're doing links within the Elementor page builder on your pages and blog posts there's two things you need to, you know, or two options when you're putting in links. And that's if you want them to go directly to the page in the same window, or if you want it to open up a new window or a new tab, if you will, um, when they click on the link. So in order to change that, you can click on the link options and then just simply click on open a new window. Now that I've done that, the next thing we're going to do is the naming a business write up that kind of goes along with this. So in order to get to that, the next thing, I'm going to actually go with like a gray-ish background, do a little bit of a gradient maybe. So we're going to go ahead and add a new section. We'll go with the full width section, stretch that out, and I'm going to come into style. And instead of clicking on the classic in order to get the image and the color, I'm going to click on the gradient button. And we're just basically going to change these colors and give us a kind of a gray to black and as you see some of these can look really cool you can play around with this stuff and get some you know really nice effects um, I'm actually gonna take this a little bit lighter and then I'm actually gonna turn this into a, uh, more of a red because I think that might actually look cool 
And I actually like that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll keep that once I get the text on there, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to come in. We'll go ahead and bring in a, uh, our heading for that section. I'll center that. Put in the heading. And then now that I have that, I can see I'm going to need spacing on this one as well. So I can go back to edit the setting. And we'll go advanced. And I'll do the same thing on the other one. Actually, no, I won't. We're going to put that at zero. I'm going to change the padding on the top and the bottom. Um, and that gives the spacing on the inside of this section instead of on the outside, which is what we did here. So in this one, we're going to add a setting on the inside. And I'll keep it at the 50. So we'll take this to 50. And then we'll take the bottom to 50. You can type it in as well if you want to. Now that we have that, we'll change this over in the style to white. It may look a little weird with the coloring, but I can fix that in a second if, depending on what it looks like once we get this done. So we'll take in the text. <clears throat> then we're gonna I'm gonna bring over the text. put the text in I'm not going to be using this color uh, so I'm gonna go ahead uh, I'm gonna keep the black text in there I'm gonna change the color on this to black as well um, and then I'm gonna go in and change this gradient maybe do something not as harsh and get rid of the bright colors and just go with like a darker gray yeah I think that looks a little bit better um, I might actually take it to a white yeah we'll do that all right so now that I have that section and I'm gonna actually center this so I'm gonna come into style and center the whole thing it looks better that way all right so I have the naming a business section the next thing is the domain call to action right before we get into how to make a website and this is actually pretty cool because i'm selling how to make a website so this section actually works perfect for me for what i'm going to do i don't need any of these other sections so i'm going to just come through and delete all these one at a time there we go all right so now that i have that the next thing i'm going to do is the domain call to action that goes to both the tutorial to buy a domain as well as to host Jack to register one. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a new section for that. And I'm going to go ahead and use this three column section. We'll click on that. And then I'm going to change the background on this. We'll stretch the section, change the background color to a black. And then I'm going to just come in. I'm going to bring in a heading. It's going to be very simple make sure that it fits in there and then I'm gonna have two buttons to go with it and I may drag these and kinda change the way it looks a little bit once I get this in here um, and we can drag this down let's put it 60 maybe there we go 60 percent and then we'll split these two at the same which should be 20 and 20 so now we can just add the two buttons in here and we're good to go once we actually finish this section. So we're going to go ahead and do the style. I'll put that to white. And I'm going to actually come in and do the padding like we did on the last one. Turn off the link. And then I'm going to do 25. Actually, I'll do 20 on the top and 20 on the bottom. And then I'm just coming up here. We're going to grab a button bring that in we'll justify that to take up the full section and then in the text is going to be tutorial go ahead and grab the link and paste that in go ahead and put that in new window justify that I'll make that button a medium so it's a little bit bigger and we can come up here to this put that in the middle so it stays middle across the board we have the tutorial we can go ahead and change the color on that because the green on black I don't like so we can go ahead and put the background color black 
and then we're going to go ahead and do a border radius solid and we'll do two pixels there we go and then if you wanted to do uh, curved buttons you can just basically use the border radius and that will allow you to basically create those rounded pill look if you will buttons um, and I actually like the way that looks so we're gonna keep that that way and then I'm basically going to do an inverted version of that for the hover and then I'm gonna kinda reverse that for the second button so we're gonna come into the um, hover section and when you hover over it I want it to invert so we're gonna make the background color white and then I'm gonna make the actual text color black and we're not gonna worry about the border because you're not going to see it so we're just basically gonna leave it like that so it just does that you know little invert look now that we have everything set on this I'm gonna come over here and right click and duplicate and then you can drag in and put it in that section now you have the button basically done you're just changing a few things so now we can come into the tutorial and click on or type in buy now put in the URL or change the URL we'll click this open a new window still set and now we just need to change the colors if I'm going to do this as a separate color so I'm gonna click on the pencil make sure it's selected go to style background color white text color black close that out there we go and then we'll go under hover and just do the same thing just switch the black to white and white to black and so when you hover over these they have different looks kind of makes it stand out so now that I've done the domain section we're at this last section and then we will have the home page designed so that being said let's go ahead and hop into it uh, yeah I think I might keep that I'm gonna change this style though I don't like the text so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this back to default alright so we'll put default go ahead and drop the text size down um, yeah we'll make it 42 um, and you see it's got a padding in here um, the way it aligns so you might want to come into the section you may want to go under advanced you see it's got a uh, 80 pixel uh, padding we can go ahead and hit zero and it doesn't really matter because we're not going to keep this aligned to that side um, but we're going to go back into the heading and we'll go ahead and change that now put that to the right for some reason it's a little bit crazy to the side so I'm going to go ahead and make sure we have let's put 10 pixels padding on the left and the right that'll kind of give us some extra spacing on the side then I have my text this is where we're gonna see the changes and the way you set things out because this is quite a bit bigger um, of course we'll go to style and get that aligned to the right as well we might actually actually let me back that out we'll go center and this is something you know you can always change stuff <laughs> so I'm looking at this now and I'm like this second paragraph in this last line I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of just to clean up the spacing because I don't need that much so I'm gonna come in here we'll change this to a medium button uh, and I'll change this to start the webinar now um, the webinar now we'll grab the link and put that in maybe there we go Shake this, make sure it opens a new window. Change the colors. Um, and with this, I'm just basically going to go white. Um, actually, the background. Kind of do a little light like that. Text colors right. Border. Go two pixels and change this to a white. And I'll go ahead and change that background color again. Drop that all the way down. And align buttons center. Yeah, I'll go center. Uh, justified, it kind of makes the button a little big. I'll center the heading as well. 
And then I'm gonna take this section vertical align to the middle, change out the link for the YouTube video. And when you do videos, while we're here, just so you know how this works, we have the video in. Welcome. Let me save you some money. We don't need that. Uh, once the video's in, you can leave it where it will display the thumbnail that you set in YouTube, but doing so doesn't help with your page time. So what we're going to do is what's called the lazy load. So we're going to come down to image overlay. We're going to turn on the image uh, overlay Welcome. and lazy load. And then we'll choose the image and we'll upload the image that we want for that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this off the other page, drag that in, get that uploaded. And then I'm just going to web design webinar thumbnail. Same thing, web design webinar thumbnail for us. Uh, about video I don't know can't type obviously uh, insert the media then that way it loads this image and that's just a way to make sure that it you know loads pretty quick um, and we'll load medium large that way it, you know loads even faster take this full screen and now we can come through and actually look at this and see how this looks overall as a website of course you have your header done we got the main hero section we have our you know little shout out to call to action to go to the blog post. Everything looks good. Colors you may want to change. You know, background image, you know, you may see this and go, eh, I don't know if I like that image. And if it's in a template, it's the same way as we did earlier in the video. You can come into this section, hit the six dots in order to get open the edit section under style. You can change the background image if you want to keep that. Just change the overlay where it's got that purple overlay. You can put that to black. Give it a totally different look that way as well. Um, and it's all on you. From that point, you know you can change the opacity if you want to do it that way. You can also do it down here. Brighten up the background a little bit. I'm going to go in here and add some padding because this kind of sits a little tight. So I can come into the padding. And I'm going to go ahead and link it all together. And that automatically gave us a little bit of extra space. But if I take this up to like 25, it'll add, in my opinion, the right amount. So we'll come over and take a look and you see it looks a little bit better. You can also, with that, in the section, come down to the background for the text and make the background have a black little square behind it. And then you can also take this and make this a little transparent just so that pops out a little bit more than normal. So that being said, I'm good with the way it looks. Everything looks good to me. The last thing we need to do, as always, is to come down and check out the responsive look and make sure everything's right. First thing is the tablet. Come down, it does go to two lines here. So you can come in, go into the typography, and it has it set here. So if you wanted to change that, you can do that here. Drop it down one more just to be sure. And then we have the buttons. And then you have that that takes care of that. And then from here, you can actually come into the section. And you can come to the advanced and the responsive side. And at this point, you can reverse columns if you want to on the tablet which would basically get these, you know, the different columns when it, you know, goes down to different sizes, it'll reverse these. If you wanted to do that, the way this actually sits, I believe I'm actually going to take these to 100% for the responsiveness. So I'm going to come into this one. Um, and column width on this one is going to be 100. That way the video is full screen. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. And we'll just come into layout and put this to 100. And now that that's done, you know, looking through the rest of it, of course, we've already done the alignment um, or the responsive check for the header and footer. So we're just checking the page content itself. Everything looks clean. Um, I like the way it looks. So next thing to do, 
is go in and check the mobile phone and make sure everything looks good there. Um, for the most part, you know, this is going to have to change. So we'll come in here to the typography on mobile and we'll change that down to get that to look right. Change the text. Um, come down, we can change the heading text for how to name your brand, get that looking a little bit better. So we can come down to content, title, typography, and change the size. Make sure it's all on one line. Everything else looks good. You can change this to one line if you want and center it. Um, so we can go ahead. Put that um, let's take it down one take it to 16 um, and then from there we can go over to content and center it we have the buttons and then we're good so from here you can go ahead and of course you can change the, the buttons you know where he says you know start the webinar now um, go ahead and do that just because uh, so we'll come into typography and then of course we'll just change this again just to where we need it so we'll drop that down manually to make sure it sits right and that's at 12 so I'm good to go we have the responsiveness built for the home page all the content put together and clean designed ready to roll so we're gonna go ahead and click on update and at this point we have built our home page like I said, we are not going to do the about page. You've watched me design one page, you'll understand the rest of them. The only thing that is a must, in my opinion, is your contact page. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and exit the dashboard. Make sure you have that published. And there's one thing we did miss, and I apologize for that, and that is changing the information on the page. So once you've published your page and you get on this page here, you can come in here and then change this. You want to change this is what the name of your website is. So for me, this is going to be your brand's name tutorial website. Then from here, you can get into the different things with the plugins like SEO. You'll see the content scores and things here. SEO is a beast of its own. Taking the time to go in and try to do all of this along with finishing and launching a website can be very time consuming. So I'm not going to be going into this. Feel free to check the extended education modules and know that SEO by Yoast puts out a lot of trainings on YouTube that will help you understand Yoast a lot better than I could because they're the ones that actually put this plugin together. That being said, we're gonna come up, make sure you get the title of it changed, and then we're gonna click update. Once it's updated, we'll go back to all pages, and then I'm gonna go ahead into the contact page. We'll click on edit with Elementor, and I'm gonna show you real quick how to do a contact form with Elementor that will directly email you from the form into your email account. So, of course, the first thing, we're gonna get rid of this contact, so we're gonna go back into the settings in the bottom left-hand corner, the little gear icon, and we're just gonna click on the thing to hide the title and change the page layout to Elementor full width. Get that changed over, and then we're gonna click on the templates, and we're gonna find the template that we're gonna use for this. So we're going to search for contact. And now that we have that, you're just going to look and see if there's one that you like the look of. I'm going to go ahead and use this last one right here that I see. It's kind of like a construction, um, well, construction company contact. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. We're going to go ahead and click on insert. And I'm going to change a couple of these things. I'm only going to be doing a form. I don't want any information given out. I don't want a phone number or anything like that, address, none of that. So I'm going to come down here and basically just X out anything that I don't need, basically leaving nothing but the contact form. So now that I have that done, we have the contact, contact us, we'd be happy to help and advise if you have any questions or inquiries. I'm going to go ahead and leave that the same. And for this one, just for the purpose of doing, changing the background out, because that just doesn't look right, I'm going to use the same background I used on the header um, or the hero section. 
on the home page so I'm gonna go into my media library as you import templates those images go into your library so you're gonna to want to come through here and delete any images that you're not using for instance let's say this image right here titles teacher 3 it was imported in that first template we used for the home page so you simply want to click on it and click on delete image and okay we don't need this image we'll delete it same with this image delete it this image and we're gonna go through and delete anything that we don't need so it doesn't take up any place or, or any um, extra space on our servers that we don't want to have we're not going to use these images there's no need in us storing it on our server and taking up space on our website so we're just simply coming through I'm gonna just delete everything and I'll come back in here in a second once we finish this and grab that chess image for the background on the contact page now that we've done that we're done we'll check the chess image click insert media we now have this set and then now you just have the form the only thing I don't like about the form is one I don't need a phone number so we can go ahead and close that you can change the email column width to 50 percent and the same thing with name Um, you may want to do a subject so you know you may want to go ahead and uh, add a new section for a subject line if you want whatever um, for now I'm just gonna leave it like this name email and message I'll change the color so I'm gonna go into style and we're gonna come down to button and I'm gonna change this background color because I really don't like that we'll just go black um, other than that I like the way it looks the only thing you need to do at this point and we're gonna go under content and come down to actions after submit this is where you're going to make sure you tell it to email you it says email but now if you come under email it's gonna show your default email address if that is an email that you use on a regular basis that is totally fine leave it if you do not have that email set to one that you use on a regular basis you will need to change this you want to make sure that you change it to one that you check on a regular basis <laughs> I don't think I can say that enough because you don't want to miss out on emails that could possibly lead to business customers clients whatever it is that you're trying to do with your website you want to make sure that you have a way for them to contact you and nothing will hurt your brand more than having a contact form and people thinking they're sending you emails and you never receiving the emails I can go ahead and click on update and then from here our website is live and ready to roll all we need to do is go through some last minute things and we'll be able to actually start promoting that our website is up so I'm gonna open link in a new tab so we can go to the actual website itself take a look around of course the about page for this is not complete is not going to be completed inside the webinar but you have your header and this is one of the main things you want to do once you finish and you think you're good to go you want to go through and visually look at everything if you hover over your logo you can see in the bottom left hand corner with most browsers the link it's actually taking you to and that's the same with any of the links that you have so we're gonna come through and just kinda of look at the links and where they go that are set throughout the page um, and your entire website for that matter and make sure that all the links are displaying properly you may want to click on it make sure it opens up the right links make sure you don't go to like 404 pages or pages to a website that doesn't exist so we're just slowly looking through making sure all the content is good checking the actual links to make sure they go where they need to go everything looks good no issues I am seeing in the sitemap that it's showing a little bit crazy so I'm gonna have to change that come up we'll do here and I'm gonna open menus in a new tab and just fix that and this is this is the reason why you go through this you want to make sure everything works right and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and click Save menu and we're gonna take a look at it again and this is you know like I said you want to go through and check on everything because you don't want to wait until it's too late to have an issue that you forgot about 
um, or that you looked over. There we go. It's showing up right. We'll click on it and make sure that it takes us to our sitemap, and it does. Problem solved. So, um, and that's one of those things sometimes with linking happens, um, there are issues. So you just need to make sure you take a look at everything. We have our Facebook link. Uh, let me back up to the actual page. Check Facebook goes. Instagram is good. Pinterest, YouTube. All right, so all the links look good. Everything is good to go. About page, like I said, you'll want to finish that before you start telling people about it. But once you do that, you'll check that. You'll also want to look into a few things like GT metrics to make sure your website loads fast and there aren't any massive issues with your website that you looked over. You can do that by copying your domain name and open up its gtmetrics.com. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually test the speed of your website. So you can come in and you can paste in your URL. You want to check the browser for what you want to check in. You want to make sure that it's in the area where you're in. So we'll do Dallas, USA. Connection, I'm going to go ahead and do off. So we're going to go ahead and click Analyze. It's going to take a few minutes because it's got to be added to the queue. Once it runs, it's going to test how fast the site loads, how many different things it tries to load as it's actually pulling the information from the web, and give us an actual score. And as you see right now, and that's one thing we haven't done yet, is the cache. Um, going through Manage WordPress and flushing the cache so it shows the new page. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, click flush cache and then we're gonna do it back and forth twice and this is only for you know massive changes on the site I'll do it back and forth twice just to play it safe it doesn't say anything's cached but we're gonna cache auto optimize as well back to manage WordPress flush that cache and then do the same thing with auto optimize again just kind of you know making sure everything is done right so we have those cache uh, that cache deleted um, and you see here, it's solid score. We have page speed score of 100%, why slow score of 99%. But as you see, this is, the Im this is the image that they got for the page. So it still showed a cached version, which is what the home page edit this is. So we can go ahead and click on retest. And get it to go ahead and pull in the new version of it with all the extra text content it may change the score a little bit it may not we'll find out here in a second now that it's actually pulled in the updated version it changed the y slow y slow score by four and it dropped the page speed by one but if you come in here and look you're using a cdn because that's what the managed wordpress is for through host check um everything looks good it's a website that loads in 1.6 seconds. There's only 20 requests. Um, the average number of requests is 91. So as you see, you've built a successful website. If you've optimized your images, everything should be running smooth. And guess what? You now have built your website. Thank you for watching the webinar and trusting me with your brand. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section or email me cj at cjhalleck.com. I also want to let you know that the extended education modules to accompany this webinar are evolving. All trainings, templates, and other resources provided on webdesignwebinar.com are 100% free. Please take advantage of those. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please share it with a friend, business partner, or anyone you think may find it helpful. Thank you again for trusting me. I hope you have a blessed day. Be great. Stay boosted. We'll see you at the top.